Yep. Hello everyone, welcome to the Jenkins Infrastructure SIG meeting. Today we are 20 August 2024. Around the virtual table, we have myself, Damien Duportel. Uh, Kevin is back. Welcome, Kevin. Uh, Jay, ready, and Mark Waite. So everyone joins. Stefan is off. Bruno is currently unavailable, and we have Jay. Okay, welcome everyone. Let's get started with announcements. First of all, the weekly release. Uh, last week, the release 2.472 has been released successfully. Um, note, it, uh, it's the first time we, were, we are using JT 12 EE8. So yes, and no issue with OSUSL despite they had a um, operation on their data center. Everything went well, so no issue whatsoever. Mark, I haven't checked that the weekly release today started on time. Neither have I, but I'm hopeful that it started on time and I won't check it for at least an hour or two. Let me just open on my other screen the page to release and it started. Okay, good. So we are running, that's good. Good, so I don't think anything else. We will have to wait for the release to continue and then the usual checklist. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have anything else on announcements. Do you have other announcements, folks? One, two, three, no, okay. So let's have a look at the upcoming calendar. So 2024, next week, um, we will be uh, 27, if I'm not mistaken, and we will have the 2.474 weekly release. Uh, next LTS is Two will be 462.2. Alex mm. is the release lead, if I'm exactly. not mistaken. Exactly, and it's 4 September is the date. Okay, a uh, 4. Uh, I think it's four. Yes, four September. Yeah, three is a Tuesday. So yeah, right. Let's release lead. Oh, oh, and we've got we've got another. I think we've got another upcoming calendar that we we should note here for our hope, mm -hmm. which is yes, actually, and it's put in actually it's that one. Then uh, no, put on as one more upcoming calendar. So I, I'll put it in, Damien. I'm sorry. I, I'm having difficulty speaking apparently today. No problem. <laughs> but what it is, is Spring Security 6 upgrade. Next step is Jetty 12 EE9. And our target date for that is September 3rd. So I'll put it into the list here because... Okay. Because that's again just like the last, just like last week's, where I was watching like a hawk. Someone will watch that thing very, very carefully. Um, Quickly, we'll with have Jetty Twelve E nine, e nine, right? And and Spring and probably Spring Security is six. No, let's not even put probably and Spring Security six. I'm pretty sure that they're both included in that package now. They have to be because Spring Security 5 doesn't work with Jetty 12. Yeah, so cool. for major, major important step. And then two weeks later, we choose the LTS baseline. And, and that's aspirational, right? There's still, we think it looks good for that, but we're, we're still testing and evaluating and doing all sorts of exploring. Cool. Thanks for the explanation. Any question? Mm -hmm. no. So no security advisory publicly announced. Um, quick check on the upcoming credential that will expire in the upcoming three weeks. Uh, <clears throat> We haven't changed anything. So same thing as last week. We said no no work to be done because it was a short uh, milestone. So I need to add these issues on the upcoming milestone. We will have 31 August 
uh, we have a, a private credential used for Terraform Azure uh, state connection. That's a private link. We already have an automated pull request, but we need to track this on an issue. Release CI uh, uses credential, an Azure client credential to access the secrets to get the certificate signing when releasing Jenkins. The credential used to access the secret vault where we have uh, everything expired the last day of August, so we need to renew it. That's a normal pattern. We also have a trusted CI Azure client used to spin up virtual machine agent on trusted CI yet expire soon. We have an automated pull request for this. And finally, 5 September, uh, the personal access token on DigitalOcean will expire. They are used for the Terraform DigitalOcean project. Um, these two ones are really important because they could endanger the next LTS release and the weekly release with GT12 EE9. So we'll have to be careful. Any question? Okay. Next major events. DevOps for Virtual Online, September 17. Uh, so us Jenkins board members and officers we will present. Uh, bad surprise earlier today. It looks like we have to send our slide before end of week as per Alisa email. So yeah, conferences asking slides already done weeks before is a pain. So I, I already touched those slides and I think I actually put infra content in there, at least a, an initial initial rough. So, but yes, you're right. It, um yeah so on infra i think i will mainly be speak about the budget allocation and new update center the budget allocation to explain the different move we want to make and uh, i want to start the topic of uh, replacing accounts jenkins io as one of the main topic mm. uh, next conference is the cd mini summit in vienna how Hohn Bruno is going to present. Congrats, Bruno. And Olivier Verna, my predecessor on that uh, job role, uh, is leading the, the summit. Any question? Something else to add on announcement or upcoming calendar? Nope, okay. Let's have a quick look at the budgets. So on the Azure CDF paid account, we have consumed 2.9K. That's a forecast at 4.5. So the acceleration uh, is now stable. We should, in the last week, we were forecasting at 4.8. Uh, so mainly uh, the main change is that we cleaned up ACP, which removed a lot of outbound bandwidth due to ACP and uh, removing disks and resources running on Kubernetes cluster due to that cleanup. I haven't seen other metrics. Uh, the next step, if we want to decrease the cost, so we have an issue about moving uh, um, private gates cluster to the sponsored account, at least for four to six months. That will uh, be the opportunity for us to modernize and uh, clean up the setup of this cluster like we did for the CI agent, Kinsayu agent cluster and infra CI agents. Uh, we can we have uh, something related to the IRM64 slash uh, x86 node pools. Uh, more on this later because we did some uh, uh, advanced uh, new things with Hervé. Uh, but the idea is to, we have seven machines, two machines for the, um, the technical services two Intel machines and three RM machines. We should get rid of the two Intel machines. Um, and finally, I still have to create two issues about eventually migrating third CI and trusted CI to sponsored account. Uh, not sure if this one is worth the effort. However, that could be interesting for the trusted CI permanent agents. More on this next week, I did not have time to to gather all the all the metrics, usage metrics, but also bills metrics. 
Uh, also, an issue to create same status. I started gathering information and metrics, but I don't have enough yet to start the issue. We are today using a big high quality Redis instance for get Jenkins IO. And I'm not even sure we use all that power, but that costs a lot. And we have a second Redis instance with less power for uh, the new update center. Uh, we have an opportunity of first merging both like we do for the databases, because you can have different Redis databases on the same service. So instead of having two services with one database each, we would want to have one service with two databases. That will be a few bucks. Uh, and also use a sizing that uh, maps to what we use. No need to have an overpowered system. But we need no more metrics before opening an issue. Otherwise, it's wasting our time. So we are at a good rate. Uh, we should continue like this. We are on the, the threshold we expect. Um, once we will have finished the month of August, uh, so in two weeks, I will give a, four, um, a, year, a year average consumption. So we will see, because we have a goal. We don't want to consume more than 60K for the whole year of 2024. That's the real goal. 4.5 is a threshold which is the average after the overconsumption we did on January and February. So we, I will give a full summary in two weeks for September. Good, is that good for everyone? Uh, what about the Azure sponsorship accounts? So that's the one we consume when we build uh, on CI Jenkins IO. So all the effort on uh, the spring security projects and plugin releases and CI CD are consumed on this one. We have 61k uh, credits until May 2025. With the consumption rate, we should be at 10k for the whole month of August, which means we have six months given that rate. So September, October. So we have until end of February if we keep the same rates here and the credits expire in May 2025. So we won't reach the May 2025 unless we decrease the amount of bill or we move some elements here to AWS. And move elements to AWS is certainly a good thing. And we should be able to reduce cost once we get past the spring security work. Makes sense. Any question? So we will make decision based on uh, the middle September uh, real-time consumption, if we see a decrease or not. Digital Ocean, uh, we still have, uh, say, uh, 16K until uh, uh, January 2025, so until end of year. So we should be able to use part of these credits soon. Right now, nothing else to add. We are at a forecast of 200 uh, bucks. Uh, a bit of increase because the archive Jenkins IO had bon bon with has increased a bit during this month. 20 bucks per month is not that much of an increase, but that's where it comes from. On CloudBees, AWS account, we have consumed 4K. The forecast is now at 6.5. So we are in the boundaries we were expecting. Uh, nine, 80 to 90% of this consumption is outbound bandwidth on the update center. Update center migration out from this account is our top priority. So we're in line with the expectations here. And we still have 60K on the sponsored AWS account. That's all for the cloud budget. Do you have any other question need for clarification or things to add on the cloud budget? One, two, three, no, okay. Okay, let's check on the task that we were able to finish this month. Uh, thanks team for taking care of removing links and an issue from the issue tracker. The author has been pinged by security team of his organization that they added information that should be deleted, so. Thanks, Tim, for taking care of this one. Thanks, Mark, for taking care of more bots and spam issues. 
sorry for that. I'm not sure, uh, given what we said last week about this rate of block, should we continue finding mechanism? Is the rate good enough? What uh, What is the, your view? The rate has dropped dramatically. I, I'm not worried. We can continue exactly as we are, Damien. No, okay. no, uh, no significant rush to change. Yes, eventually we know we want to do something more, but it, it can wait till it could wait for months. That's no problem. Um, last week I've been fixed. Thanks, Mark, for taking care of this one. Um, we have had, um, so two, two person that were cooked in the crossfire of this spam account. As soon as we uh, unblocked the, cre the, um, the circuit breaker on account Jenkins.io, they were able to have their account created. So everything is fine. They confirm it was working for them. So one, uh, one is a plugin maintainer. Welcome to the contributor team. Mm -hmm. And the other wants to help. So many thanks for this. So in the same topic, vandalism in Jira. So that was the initial uh, issue. Let me update. Oh, what did I do? I was a, I was a bit enthusiastic. OK, uh, vandalism in Jira has been closed. As per uh, Mark message, the rate of uh, spam decreased. So we were able to close. Everything has been fixed back, if I understand correctly. So no more action required on that topic. Correct. Uh, we closed one issue, I'm reordering uh, issues right now, uh, about bad gateway message error when builds were running on CI Jenkins IO and were trying to download from ACP. Most of these messages were errors due to the public ACP instance, the one I mentioned earlier that we cleaned up. That's why I've closed the issue. Three weeks ago, we moved the workload from one ACP public and one private ACP. Everything is on the internal private ACP. Not exposed anymore, not paid by CDF credits anymore, and also with better performances and better setup. Um, so that one has been closed because we remove all the all leftovers, DNS records, uh, the, um, data disk, et cetera, et cetera. However, we had another issue, thanks Basil, really for the help and for mentioning this. The new ACP system wasn't able to handle properly the BOM build uh, because the BOM build was uh, really, really um, uh, big in terms of consumption and amount of requests. It appears it was, it was a mistaken host name. We were using the external host name for BOM agent, which were inside the cluster. So by changing the external host name to the internal host name, we avoided the SNAT connection that said, hey, you are inside that private network. You have to go outside and then go back inside. The Linux has that kind of funny thing which they are trying to reuse TCP connection because it's really expensive to open a new TCP socket. And the system was sometimes panicking on the load balancer that takes care of from outside to the inside. The load balancer was like, oh, I see a request like this and the same request that goes back inside. That's weird. Let's reset the connection. And this happened once we reached some threshold after around seven to eight minutes of um, sustained activity workload on ACP. So most of the plugin builds were working properly because they don't need seven of eight minutes of dependency download. However, the BOM builds does that kind of workload. So that has been fixed and a bit of uh, ego metric. ACP was close to two gigabytes per second with the bomb builds. That's quite, quite, quite a good number for um, bomb builds artifact downloads. Theoretically, we can pick at four gigabytes 
with the cluster setup. So we are at half of the third recall number and we use less than 15% of the CPU. That means we can go even further. Oh, and and I, I contend that is not an ego metric because that two gigabits per second download speed would have been demanding on repo.jenkinsci.org if ACP did not exist. So not only is it not ego, it's critical and we're, we're better off than if we were directly downloading from our own artifact repository. So this is, this is a win in every way. We've reduced load on, on the artifact repository, increased our own performance, and we've got a, we've got a, a, a much better setup. Thank you. Thanks very much, Damien. Thanks to Hervé. Thanks to Stefan, everybody who's worked on artifact caching proxy. And I have to really thank Basil for pointing me things that I was uh, deep dive inside the problem and I was going in a mistaken direction. And uh, his help helped me to go on the right way and looking at the right problem just in time, which unblocked the bomb release. So thanks everyone. Finally, we started to have uh, an issue about we reached the max mine GOIP rate limits because we were trying to download the database four times because we had four copies on the cluster. Now we have a separated uh, system that every six, 72 hours try to update it only once and all of the mirror bits instance are using that data. Please note that thanks to this system, even if we reached again the rate limit, we did yesterday, I still don't know why, <laughs> I need to investigate, but that's not blocking us from having mirror bits being redeployed because they use the stale database. So clearly we made this, uh, our mirror system way more resilient. So just to be sure I've understood that. So it means that we've got a cached copy of the max mind information that we need and we're reusing that in multiple locations rather than relying on every consumer of it downloading directly from max mind. Exactly. Good, very good. Any question? Okay, just not we had two issues that uh, we didn't close as not planned because no action required. The first one, just a quick reminder to everyone, we had a user asking, why don't we have a 2.452.4? So that's one of the LTS we released two weeks ago during the security advisory. And these users were trying to use what is called dynamic update center. Reminder, as per the update Jenkins IO webpage, if you need a version specific update site, please use update Jenkins IO and add the query string version equal. That one will redirect to something that you do not have to care about. The only thing you have to care about is not the redirection, but the content of the final response. So Damien, uh, yep. can, you, can you help me understand why someone would need a version specific update site? I still don't quite grasp what the actual use cases are for a version specific update site. Jenkins itself asking that question, no problem. But me as a human being, are there? I, I don't understand it. I don't either. Oh, uh, okay. All right. You should have Jenkins plugin CLI or Jenkins War. There might be use cases, but if that use cases appear, the answer is use the query string version. Right. Um, the word part and the explanation, because we are all around, it's that URL, even if you specify the dot four version today, it's redirecting to the dynamic dot three. And it's not a mistake. The dynamic uh, update center are, are initialized and created when there is a plugin that specify that new baseline as the minimum version. In that case, you have a new one, but we don't have any plugin requiring 2.452.4 above the dot three. Usually we, we tend to have a new baseline on dot one. So that's the reason why we keep using the whole dynamics table because the content is not changing whether you are on the dot four or the dot three. 
there is no more dependency constraint. So you can see that redirection target as an implementation detail. That's not the best, but if you follow the instruction with the query string, you have no problem. If you want more detailed explanation, Daniel uh, added a comment on, uh, on the holder issue with details. Uh, the other issue, I don't remember what it was, NA. Okay, I have no idea what this one was. Ah, okay, that's someone uh, mistakenly using LDesk as a, for support request. So I redirected them to another location. That's all for the closed issue. Any questions so far? Something I could have uh, forgot? Nope, okay. So now let's go over the work in progress. Uh, I want to start with Jay today. Um, Jay, can you give us a summary of uh, the, the task about providing GDK21 for uh, builds in our agents? What's the status from your point of view and what are the next steps? Yeah, uh, so we've created a bunch of JDK 17 and 21 uh, templates that would deploy Spot agents, uh, Spot Azure agents. So we, uh, let me just open the sheet. Just mm -hmm. Created and deployed for Linux inbound, Linux SSH and Windows inbound. Yeah, uh, am I audible? Yes. Yes, we can hear you just great. Yep. Yeah, so I think we've created a bunch of, uh, not think, sorry. Uh, we've created a bunch of Linux SSH uh, JDK agents for CI. We've done it for trusted, trusted.ci. We've also done and tested it for search here, and currently we're doing the last uh, phase of this milestone, which is uh, infra.ci. So uh, the current status is we are almost done with it, but you know, as you encounter a lot of issues while uh, implementing something new, so we had to make a couple of mod modifications for the init script that would initialize these spot instances. So yeah, once uh, uh, the fix is ready, we, so if we test it and it's successful, then we can proceed to wrapping up the whole plan of providing the JDK agents. And on my side, I'm still working on the Windows SSH uh, templates. So because adding uh, environment variable works, but not changing the path on the non variable. Uh, there is uh, due to Windows open SSH behavior. Uh, we have, there is still one last uh, thing I want to try related to the regex stuff because there are different layers. You have the machine level, the user level, and it looks like I could hack around the user level. Well, usually the path is, should be on the machine level. Um, user machine of level and restarts SSH service. And there is the fallback technique. Uh, I will the, most probably less, let Jay and Stefan work on it next week if I cannot fix the, if I cannot find the, if the first solution doesn't work. The idea will be to remove default GDK from Windows uh, VM templates. And so without any existing uh, GDK present on the path, we can freely add the, the one we want during the, the agent initialization phase. That one is heavier and harder to maintain. So if we can avoid it, that will be better. But if we don't have any solution, then we will go on the fallback. Any question left? Okay, um, next issue. Uh, Jay, can you let 
let us know about the Azure VM agent in its script. So can you just explain the problem underlined by that new issue that we created during the milestone? Uh, yeah, definitely. So there was a problem with the init script, like I explained before, which uh, it was failing because, so at the beginning of the init script, there's a script that uh, initiates the data.org agent. And since there was a problem with initiating the data.org agent, the whole init script failed. So we were working on a fix and there is a proposed fix. Um, we'll likely deal with this in a day or two and we'll be able to proceed with the further tasks. Thanks. Any uh, I don't want to elaborate on the solution because we might have to try a couple of solutions. So I'm confident that the solution works because you got the the same solution as from CI Jenkins, Sayo, yeah. which is yeah. not failing. So my confidence is really high that your work will fix the problem. All right. Let's be optimistic. Any question, clarification, things to add on this one? Nope. Uh, I think I've covered yeah. up everything yeah. that needs to be added. Thanks for the work, Jay. Uh, next one, uh, Mark, could you give us uh, an update on the dis suspending distribution of the Windows Slaves plugins, please? Yeah, so the sort of the dark story there is that the plugin with the identifier Windows Slaves is a an outdated uses an out uses an outdated technique to launch Windows agents. The technique no longer works in any <clears throat> secure version of Windows, um, except if you have purchased extra support for Windows Server 2012, which reached end of life in October of 2023 for the free security support. So if you buy extra security support, you could still potentially be using this technique with some, some dirty tricks, et cetera, on Windows Server 2012. Uh, the concern from Daniel Beck is, hey, do we have users that are running Windows Server 2012? Um, and my thought was, well, Windows Server 2012 is outside its public security support lifecycle that ended in late 2023. And just like Red Hat Enterprise Linux, just like Ubuntu 18, we stop supporting things when the, the vendor stops providing freely available uh, security fixes. However, because Microsoft is one of our sponsors, conceptually, we could create Windows Server 2012 on our Azure account and use their service at no additional charge to us. So it's a, it's a gray zone that Daniel and I are still in discussion about. Now, all of that doesn't change the non-usefulness of the plugin on Windows Server 2016, Windows Server 2019, Windows Server 2022. It's unusable on any of those. But to Daniel's point, there are 80,000 installations of this thing scattered across the infrastructure. Now that's, that's a significant decrease. 12 months ago, it was 105,000. So we're, we're going down, we're going in the right direction. And the, the only question is, is now the time to suspend it or should we wait a little bit and suspend it later, which will be easier for us as administrators, which will be easier for Jenkins users. And that's, that's still being discussed. Sorry, that was an awful lot of, of unnecessary detail, but there you go. Ah, uh, that, that explained. Thanks, Mark. Is there, are there any questions need for clarification on this one? So if I understand correctly, we keep this issue on the current milestone assigned to you and we continue right. waiting for discussion right. and decision. Right, and, and the decision will either be yes, we suspend, and I've submitted the pull request to do that, or no, we don't, at which point I'll close this issue and we will, I'll put a reminder to myself to reopen it in 12 or 18 months. Looks good to me. Mm -hmm. Clear for everyone? Uh, there is an issue I've 
the next one I've added it uh, on the milestone because we want we ask you Mark to uh, to merge it with the uh, duplicates which you did. Uh, I understand that that issue should be moved out of the milestone now because there are no uh, I don't see anything on the infra team to work on it. That's related to the infra statistics stuff. Is that correct? Yeah, I, I don't think the infra team, ultimately it it looks like an infra issue, but it really needs coding help to, to, to implement the solution. And this is not typically something that we will, will write the code to implement the solution. Not really a direct action can be done. By the infra team. Which probably means we should move this issue to the repository where it belongs. And then finding the issue is that that's probably the one that does stats generation. Okay. Because we can't close it in the sense that the problem it describes is real. And yep. it's been real for, for many months, right? This was, there's a link to the earlier bug report that I had submitted. And, and so it's, it's, it is correctly still a, an issue. It's just that issue needs to be solved somewhere other than in the infra help desk. Okay. I'm uh, asking the question just to be sure if we don't right. forget anything. Great. Thanks, Mark. In any case, I will remove it from milestone and then we'll take care of moving it away from it. Right. Yeah, it, certainly it's not in the milestone. There's not not any action for us, but uh, it's it's akin to the same problem we have in documentation that we've got uh, a tool that is broken. But the the writers, Kevin and, and me in that sense, and Bruno uh, aren't, aren't fixing the tool, but the tool needs to be fixed. So... Same, same problem. Thanks. Uh, two issues at least are on hold. Uh, build stuck due to GitHub limit, API rate limit. Um, I haven't had time to spend on this. I'm keeping it on, on the next milestone because there is no uh, days off this week. So I should spend time to on creating the GitHub application, inserting the new credential and updating the job config so they use the new credential and finally remove the whole top level credential. Um, I don't see other solutions here, so let's go with splitting credential. Plugin score, Adrien is overloaded, so let's wait on this one. Uh, still on hold, but keeping it just as a reminder for ourselves. Well, and, and that one doesn't need to be in the milestone because we're not going to work on it. Yep, good point. Okay. Let's remove from milestone. No actionable for us. Uh, what do we have? Oh, um, yes, update, CLI, update CLI, use separated pipelines. We split in two pipelines, each repository. That one is also on old. I, am, I did not have time to work on this one. This one is blocked by the GH API rate limit because it changed the configuration of the jobs quite often. So each time we do a single line change, we have to wait one hour and a half before the rate limit is reset. So right now we need to fix first the GH rate limit before the rest. Um, two big issues. First one, uh, we had some uh, improvement on the migration from Intel to ARM64. Um, so with the help of a friend of mine who is really proficient with Golong, and it's not Olivier Verna, uh, and the work of Hervé and the help of Hervé and a bit of, uh, let's say, a combination of the, uh, the work of the three of us, we are able to run mirror bits on ARM64. Uh, we have two methods. We started on uh, two methods, but we have to choose. 
uh, Hervé and I didn't see anyone. Hervé was starting to have an opinion. I remain neutral because I see pro and cons on both methods. The both methods are we build the binary ourselves. So we select the tag of the version we are running in production. Uh, but the problem that we met and we finally solved today is that it does. we cannot rebuild it as it. It used generated code. Uh, we have something named grpc proto definition that generates Golang code or any native code based on a, a universal definition. It's used by a grpc when you have client and server. You define the messages that go through the grpc channel and then the tool Proto-C will generate your native code for the messages. It will generate the object in Java or the struct in Golang or the dynamic code and packages on JavaScript. So that means you can have one object message definition for your whole platform and you can have numerous implementation with different languages. That's gRPC Proto system. And the code, the generated code, we weren't able to generate it it's because the last we had a problem between the Golang version, the MyRorbit version, and missing dependencies. So we had to work on code analysis in order to find, um, let's say, a bit more recent commit on MyRorbit's line that had this code committed and the dependency vendored, so part of the code. And we were able to successfully build it. And the we, we audited line by line the changes between the tag we are running and that change that, it, that we were able to successfully work. And the answer is yes, it worked and update Jenkins IU is currently using it, the new update center. The second method is there is a Debian package with IRM64 supports that is a few months old. I missed that information and Tim Jacom pointed it to us. However, the Debian package requires us to use Debian seed. It's an unstable distribution of Debian, always unstable. And it's, uh, it's designed for virtual machines, meaning it has direct dependencies on the Redis packages, which is needed to run mirror bits. Do we want a container image in production with the Redis packages, even if it's not running? And an unstable base OS that we are constrained to. These are the two cons. Each one has its own advantages, of course. Uh, we hope MirrorBits project to do a formal release soon, end of year, most probably. Uh, so Hervé's proposal that looks like to make sense is we keep building the binary ourselves because it generates a Golang binary that we can have on Debian or Ubuntu, at least. So we are free of the base, the base operating system of the image. But we have to keep the Golang version up to date in order to be sure that we fix the CVs, even if the upstream mirror bits isn't. Um, good thing is that it works very well, and that will allow us to move four uh, instances from out from Intel to ARM, meaning the last service standing will be LDAP. So my proposal is that for the upcoming milestone, let's move all mirror bits to RM64 in order to decrease the amount of machines required, at least one less machine because LDAP has only one replica. So, so on the reduction of machines, that's because we have some, some AMD64 that we had to keep in order to keep mirror bits running. Exactly. And everything else had already moved to ARM64. Exactly. Got it. Okay. That's so and and when you said you said that we're already running mirror bits on the build of mirror bits in production, uh, is that for the new update center or also for yes. the existing update center? No, the, the, the existing the same. No, uh, existing update center is only an Apache server on a virtual okay. machine. All no right. mirror bits involved. Uh, but we have get Jenkins IO, which is heavily used. So yeah, might not be the best location to test the new binary yet. Got but it. we will have to migrate it to that binary uh, soon. 
Any question, clarification for this one? So many thanks for to Julien Levesi and uh, Hervé Lemer on, on the work they put here that will help us to avoid, to, to decrease the cost of the cluster. Uh, finally, last item work in progress is uh, uh, the new update center. So a lot of work. Um, we finally fixed the frequent, uh, the frequent uh, 503 errors. I don't, I won't dig in details, but we had to fine tune the configuration and to add the mirror fallback uh, because we were able to reduce uh, the problem to only a 10 to 15 second time window when the update center was uh, scanning and refreshing mirrors and data. And due to the choices we made for this architecture, there were a, a period where none of the mirrors were serving the file reference by mirror bits because we were in the update, the distributed system timestamp. It was 10 to 15 seconds, but that's, that was happening. By using a fallback mirror, it means mirror bits will serve the file from the fallback without checking its checksum. So during these 10 seconds, if a request comes, it will have the update center, which is five minutes old. That's the only downside. That's what I mean by stale data. So it's clearly better to have a five minute old update center revision than a 503 error. Okay, but the, it's not that the five minute old JSON is wrong or incomplete or corrupt. It's merely that it is temporarily, it is time-wise a little out of date. Exactly. Okay, all right. So it is it is not that we're delivering partial data, rather just that either we, we 503 and say service unavailable, or we'll give you previous data, which be, the reason we give you previous data is the new data isn't, isn't fully ready yet. Exactly. Did I, did I say it well enough? Okay. Exactly. Okay, good. So... So and five minutes, five minute old data is is actually not not anywhere near outside of our our what a, SLA is the wrong term, but our expected lifetime of the exactly. or expected currency of that data. Exactly. Okay, great. So that's the magic of distributed system. <laughs> but that 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 works really good, and we can afford that because we are controlling the mirrors. That's really important to have in mind. That was a hard requirement from the GenSec team. We cannot do this with Get Jenkins Sayu, where the mirrors are outside our, our management. Or at least we need to control the fact that the fallback is in sync with mirror bits. Theoretically, that should be the case with Get Jenkins Sayu, since the fallback is archived Jenkins Sayu. However, in the case of get Jenkins IO, we don't have synchronous update of archive Jenkins IO. That's why we still cannot afford this. And we don't have the 503 errors in the case of get Jenkins IO. But for updates Jenkins IO, that was really important because if you publish a security advisory, you need the JSON file to be available as soon as possible. Um, so next step. Uh, so, sorry, we also improved uh, monitoring. Improved monitoring, collecting all kind of logs. And we improved the security of all the mirror bit system. They are now running with restricted system, restricted file system. So for instance, you cannot install a package on these machines now. And you only have a Tiny uh, TMPFS, so you cannot download tons of things on it. So you cannot DDoS like this. There are still attack um, attack layers if you break out of the mirror bit server, but still you cannot write on the file system. You cannot change user. You cannot get capabilities. So we clearly decrease the attack vector on this one. Error file system, no capabilities, etc. So the next step right now, use mirror bits, share PC client. Uh, here it's uh, 
let's say under the hood, we are using Kube uh, Kubernetes connection from trusted CI to trigger a scan every five minutes, the scan that was creating the five or three errors. Uh, we discovered that the mirror bits can use a client server model. So we are working on exposing through a private link the connection between client and server. It, it features a password protection layer. So the goal for us is to from trusted uh, CI Jenkins IO to trigger updates and scan of the mirrors through the common line of mirror bits, which will greatly decrease the attack vector. If you can find a way to control the update center updates, you won't be able to reach Kubernetes API. You will only be able to reach the mirror bits command line and that avoid maintaining credential on the cluster as well. Instead of kubectl exec on trusted.ci, add um, Datadog monitoring. That's the next step uh, on the expected URL to validate redirections and content. Generate missing um, index listing. We have a few pages where we used to have Apache generating a listing. And now we want to generate these HTML pages by ourselves. Uh, that's, that are the three next steps. And once these steps are finished, we can plan the brownout. Any question on the new update center? No, a comment as a happy user of the new update center. Uh, Damien's trick of using ETC hosts and my DNS server to change my IP address, I now get updates.jenkins.io content from an IPv6 address. Yes, it's available. And I get it from a US-based location, even though updates.jenkins.io is sitting in Europe. Thanks for the feedback. So yeah, we are almost there. That will be five to six K per month less on CloudBees AWS build. So really happy with the outcome here. Any question? Okay. So we have a, a one, two issues to remove from the milestone. We have at least three to four issue to work on on the upcoming milestone. And we have a bunch of new issues from Triage. Uh, first one, uh, thanks Mark for taking care of upgrading Maven on 3.9.9. .9. As pointed out by Hervé, I wasn't aware that ATH, the acceptance test harness, had a custom Maven version, but that's the case. And the question raised by Hervé, because we used to have um, update CLI pull requests on the Packer image that generate agent templates to be the first step. Update CLI detect a new Maven version. That's a trigger for us to say, hey, let's start the upgrade campaign. And then all the rest is downstream to that pull request once it's merged. Mm -hmm. Until then, only that pull request remains. But we also have the ATH, and Hervé was wondering, which is a really legit question, what do you think about deciding that the version of Maven on the acceptance test harness will be the trigger? So we don't update Maven unless the ATH has been updated like you did. Um, I'm, I'm not sure I'd make it that, well, it's certainly valuable, but I'm not sure that I would make it that coupled because there could be things that, Maven, a new Maven release causes an issue for ATH that doesn't cause an issue for most other things. So for me, I, I, I appreciate that. I think that's a, a, an interesting idea. I'm just not sure that ATH is, is sort of the gold standard. I would think the other places are closer to the gold standard for how well is, is Maven doing for us. This one is, I think, a rather obscure case where it's it's got a, an explicitly declared dependency on Maven for its own reasons, right? And that okay. those reasons I think are, are, are right in the context of ATH, but they're not compelling for the rest of Jenkins infra. For okay. me, I, I think you're, the one that you were using is the, that was being used previously as the top level 
is still a, a good choice as the initiating one. And, okay. and it would have, it, or I assume it did get an update CLI or a, another pull request that proposed to change it recently, didn't it? Uh, absolutely. Okay, good. Uh, that you validated this because somehow, uh, Mark wait, you are the acceptance validation for this pull request. That means that pull request is only open if Maven, the new Maven version is available and can be downloaded successfully. That's the only right. validation we run. And then it's only humans. So that means we could totally break all of the builds if there is a regression on Maven. If we have oh. that pull request, we deliver it and we don't have any feedback. Well, but that, but that's uh, is doing some form of automated checking of this thing is probably very difficult because Maven is so widely used that mm, that totally. I, okay so so yeah I, I see your point it is that this pull request doesn't have a lot of automated checks does Jenkins core build does do Jenkins plugins build we really do need a person who is a, a an active user of Maven to have checked those canaries in the mine, those those test cases. Exactly. Okay. And that's why I talked about acceptance test harness, uh, because if acceptance test harness is able to keep up with Maven versions, mm. that means we could say, OK, we know the ATH has started using it, so we can start pushing and downstream, okay. downstreaming. I, 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 I see your logic. I had missed that in, in the earlier description. I thought, oh, ATH is just one use. But your point is, yes, but it is a, a valid, very, very serious use where it applies it in in many, many cases with many, many things. So, yeah. so I, yeah, so it's may, acceptance test harness becomes the smoke test. That, exactly. that is the gatekeeper for everything else. And, and I think now that you, now that I understand that, that makes sense. That would be perfectly reasonable then. And additionally, given the technique we use with update CLI, if uh, ATH has the Maven version reverted because it fails or catastrophically, if it's smoke, <laughs> mm -hmm. if, it, if you operate the electronic board wrongly enough, <laughs> Um, the pull request on Packer images will be automatically closed by update CLI because it will rely on the version on the main branch of acceptance test harness. Right. If the version change, the, the change will be closed and canceled. Uh, if we move that way, we might want to add uh, either depend about renovabot update CLI, but an automated update of Maven. So that will avoid uh, using mark weight as a service. Oh, I th I thought it. I think I think updates or I think that Dependabot will already do it on the acceptance test harness. I just happened to be rather aggressive because I'd been I detected it on a during a Saturday hacking session, and I Perfect. said, you okay. know what, I wanna I wanna try this someplace where it where it, we can try it, like you said, for smoke. And as it turns out, the board did not it go up in flames. It did not turn into <laughs> smoke. Good. Um... Uh, just two points about this one, Mark. So first, that can only be Renovabot because Dependabot doesn't support ARG on the Docker files. Ah, only Renovabot okay. and Update CLI are doing this. And I will recommend you to revert to Archive Jenkins IODist. Um, because... Okay, well, tell me that one, yeah. why? Um, oh, no. You are using no, no, the this new is, DLCDL. I'm using no, 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 the, correct, the correct, Apache sorry. content delivery network. And and now, but but you're it, it is possible that that's wrong as well. I, I'm no, not no, sure, no. but I it's because I was focused on the remove slash disks, and we used to have download problem because this meant on the infra we were using one of the mirrors copy and paste it somewhere. Mm. But I forgot that you are um, you are using the DLCDN, which is the mirror bits equivalent on their infrastructure. So that's that's a good URL. Never mind my my point. Uh, so okay. So in that case, I propose we we switch based on what we propose. Uh, accepting trying with uh, okay. ATH is the smoke test in order to start the bump Maven campaign. Any objection? Okay, good. And we have to perform the campaign now. It's available and merged. Let's move to ATH as smoke test. 
campaign to proceed. Okay, Jay, I might have some work on that area for you. I will let you know tomorrow. Uh, same something we need to start working, working on, uh, that's Kubernetes 1.29. Jay, I definitely have work for you on this one. Yeah. So kubectl updates, you did it for the previous one. So you can yes, start one as, soon as, as soon as when you want. I will want to migrate a cluster end of week to 1.29, either CI or infra CI. I believe infra CI. Yeah, we can there. definitely get started with, uh, I think we, with infra CI. Can cluster to migrate end of week. So you can uh, start working on the prepare work like you did with Stefan for the 1.29, uh, 8, sorry. But that's the same with uh, 1.29 this week. Good for you? Yeah. Yeah, Any question? Works. Any objection? Clarification? Nope. Okay, so two new issues on the milestone. Um, I'm mentioning this one because uh, Irving asked me a few questions to help him about the stats, the new stats Jenkins IO websites. There is a, what I, what I say, uh, modern web framework are not following web standard. That's how I will call it. And that's how uh, everybody described the problem. So if you go to the new website stats and you change page, it changed the URL and the routing happens on client side. If you reload the page, you end up on a 404. Because this new web, whatever framework, they do routing only on the client side. So if you look at my URL, I'm going on the, the website is nice. I click on statistics in details and it add slash statistics, but it's only client side. So now if I reload my page, I end up on a 404 because on server side, there are no slash statistics resource. So clearly what you saw is something forbidden on HTTP and that should not even exist. However, we won't change the whole framework or you can burn React JS and that kind of things. So Hervé found the solution with uh, Shlomo and Hervé worked and found the solution using a special Nginx directive that say, hey, try the, pro the asked URI, so slash statistics in my example. If it doesn't exist on the file system or eventually backends, then fall back to slash index HTML. That's a really, really powerful system on Nginx. It's used for caching. If you have a, a, a Java or, or PHP backend, Nginx is able to search for a file it has on the file system and serve it. Otherwise, it could fall back to uh, sending to the backend to have a dynamic response. So you could have one web app where the files are statically served by uh, Nginx and dynamic requests come from the backend. I used to cache static resources of Jenkins with Nginx like this to uh, remove some workload out from Jenkins itself. So Hervé found the solution and that solution requires uh, a bit of work on the Elm charts. The, mm. Since this is infrastructure work, even if Hervé has the time, he, he shared the knowledge with me and he's going to document it, but that's an issue that needs to be on the current milestone as per the infrastructure work. Great. Any question on this one? So this will this the the destination here is to give us a replacement for stats.jenkins.io that is the much better looking stats.jenkins.io. By the way, I used new stats.jenkins.io just yesterday to contribute to the slides for the DevOps world. So Great work. It's, it, it's, it's, it's a beautiful site. They have done such amazing work on that page. Pages, and it's pages and pages and pages of cool things. Last item. Uh, for me, it's one of the last, uh, it's the last item to have this thing ready for production. So that's really good job. So congratulations to everyone involved in that project. That's really, really impressive. Um, we have a new issue, I haven't looked at it, about uh, a new plugin 
that has the token that has everything run, but still not able to do the initial release. Uh, we need to check it. I, I don't know more. It needs to be diagnosed. So that's a kind of support issue related to the tokens. So new uh, that, that has to be added to the current milestone and worked on. We had a question also by Alex. I'm not really sure to get the whole scope of the question. The question reference something on the repository permission updater about that runs sometimes to check uh, and we might want to have a state so we only update. So there is something related to the RPU uh, work in progress. Tim proposed about Terraform. I'm not really sure to understand. Do we need to write our own Terraform provider for RPU? Can we use Terraform with custom shell script? I don't know. So I've asked for details. Um, until then, uh, I propose that this issue is not triaged. We remove the triage label, but I don't see what is expected. So we might want to have more definition on this one. I believe the JSOC project uh, means someone from JSOC project need to work on this topic and elaborate. But the first step will be to define the requirements before going to JSOC. Any objection? Um, uh, need clarification, no milestone yet. Uh, an issue I created last week we mentioned, uh, we have two actionable regarding account Jenkins IO. It's currently ref it's the third result if you search for Jenkins account. We have a whole wiki page that reference the application. I propose, since it's an old wiki page, to stop uh, to tell Google to stop indexing that page. Uh, I haven't checked on ChatGPT and stuff, so maybe someone with ChatGPT good habits could tell me if you search for Jenkins accounts, are you sent to accounts Jenkins IO, which will be wrong, and in that case, we will need to find a way to have ChatGPT doing things differently. Uh, so that one is new milestone. Uh, we have Ubuntu 24.04 campaign. Um, still need to analyze the uh, broken build for Docker packaging. So we have a pull request to upgrade the base image of Docker packaging image from Ubuntu 22 to Ubuntu 24. It's failing, but only on infra CI. Need to diagnose. I don't know why. That one is low priority for now. And the brand new one, high priority. Uh, I will want to do this Wednesday, uh, bumping the Datadog plugin on CI Jenkins IO. Uh, looks an easy one, but that requires announcing to user that maybe and most probably will break the instance, doing a backup, upgrading the plugin, waiting two hours to see if it breaks or not, and eventually restore the backup and lose two hours of builds. Yep. Yes, we we waited long enough this time after the last plugin. It's been one month without update on the plugin. So I start to have a, a bit more confidence on it's not to break. That's all for me. Let me look if we have new issues. We don't have new issues. Do you have other top level new topic to add? Nope, okay. So then I uh, will publish last week notes, these notes, uh, and let's go on working on these elements. Thanks everyone for your work and see you next week. Stopping sharing, stopping recording. Bye-bye.